Hey everyone, here's an interesting bit of electronics history. This is a usage counter, uh, so it tells you how many hours a piece of equipment has been used. It just has two terminals on the back, and these are just mounting lugs here. These don't electrically connect to anything. And when we put 12.6 volts on the terminals, uh, this thing starts counting the number of hours. Uh, what's interesting is that it has no mechanical parts, really, and it's also completely passive. And the way it works is it has this thin glass tube that has uh, mercury in it, but notice there's a little gap right here, and this is where you read the meter. So this is times 100, and this is the Russian word for hour. So 500 hours, the full scale is 2,500 hours. And the way this works is when we put electricity on here, uh, the mercury from this side of the column is actually transferred through that gap, which is filled with electrolyte, to this other side. So the gap actually creeps along as we put power through this thing, and that's what uh, saves the time, or that's what, what, how you can read off the time. In some sense, it's not tamper-proof at all, because all we have to do is switch the polarity of the power, and the gap will start moving back the other way. However, if we run it long enough where the gap goes off the end of the column, then it's done. You can't ever reset it because the gap is, is missing and there's nothing to do this transfer anymore. This draws about 60 microamps at the rated 12.6 volts. And I made a little time lapse just showing what this thing looks like under a microscope so we have a chance of actually seeing the gap move. The time lapse spans about 8 hours today, but I was running it at a slightly higher voltage to try to get some more speed out of it. Technically this device is called a coulometer because what it's actually measuring is the amount of total charge that we've put through it. The number of mercury atoms that are transferred across that gap is directly proportional to the number of electrons, you know, the amount of the total charge that we've put through this device. So if we run it at a higher voltage, it will very happily move the gap along at a higher rate because it's just measuring the, uh, the total charge and a higher voltage means more current, more electrons, and more atoms being moved. When I first started to do the numbers, I realized that there must be a current divider inside this thing. And so I cracked it open and sure enough, there is a resistor network that looks like this and it gives us about a 10 to 1 current divider so that the actual uh, number of electrons flowing through the tube, the, uh, the mercury capillary, is about one-tenth the number flowing through the main circuit. I wanted to see if I could figure out how fast the uh, counter should run based on the actual physics involved, and it actually turned out uh, fairly close. So I measured the capillary diameter at about 0.35 millimeters, and then calculated the area, and uh, the molecular weight of mercury is about 200 grams. And then with the density, we can figure out that one mole of mercury is about uh, almost 15,000 cubic millimeters. And then if we divide by the area of that capillary, we can figure out that one mole of mercury atoms is about uh, 1.5 times 10 to the 5 linear millimeters on that scale per mole. Uh, the reason we want to know this in terms of moles or number of, mer of mercury atoms is because the actual uh, electroplating or electrotransfer, electrochemistry really, that's happening in there is dependent on the number of electrons. And in this case, I'm guessing that the mercury is in a 2 plus charge state inside there. I don't know what the electrolyte is, but it's some kind of probably aqueous solution. And so when the mercury comes off, it'll be in 2 plus. So we actually need two electrons to get one uh, mercury ion across that gap. And then we have 6.2 times 10 to the 18 uh, electrons per coulomb and 6.02 times 10 to the 23 uh, items per mole. So then we end up with this amount of moles per coulomb. So we basically figured out how much electricity it's going to take to move a mole of stuff. And we also know how much linear space a mole is going to take up in that capillary. So then if we multiply those two numbers together, we get uh, about three quarters of a millimeter per coulomb. So that's pretty convenient. So if we had one amp for one second, that would be one coulomb, and we should get 0.77 millimeters of travel. So as it happens, uh, 500 hours on this scale is exactly eight millimeters. And so I did uh, eight divided by that rate that we just came up with, 
and came up with 10.3 coulombs, but that's 10.3 coulombs through the capillary. If we use that 10 to 1 current divider, that's actually 101 coulombs of total charge. And this thing is drawing about 62 microamps. Uh, so if we calculate it all out, we get 453 hours calculated when it really should be 500. So I think that's probably within the um, the margin of, of error here. I, I think probably the biggest iffy measurement is the capillary diameter and also the resistance of that gap uh, through the electrolyte. I, I just, had, just took a guess at that. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. See you next time. Bye.